Let's talk about 2022. I'm going to talk about some of the biggest surprises, some of the favorite things that I've picked up from this past year, as well as what I'm most looking forward to going into 2023, kind of like a watch list, both shoemakers, characteristics, details, what I really think is going to be most important. Let's start with the biggest surprises, and it may not be a surprise to everyone else because of the video that just came out, but this is the Enzo Bonafe whole cut Chelsea boot and the Navy Zug leather. I couldn't be more excited that Lorenzo had reached out to me to help kind of lead and design this group made to order. And uh, this one did not disappoint whatsoever. I've only had these still less than a week and I've worn them four times. I just love how our vision really came to life in every aspect and the Navy in the Zug leather just didn't disappoint. Number two is Shell Cordovan sneakers. I've always observed these from afar, but it wasn't until recently that I reached out and started communicating with Crown Northampton and expressed some interest in this Harleston model. I saw these, the gum sole, the uh, minimalistic uh, take on kind of this classic sneaker pattern combined with the fact that it was Shell Cordovan uh, just really like checked all of the boxes for me on this. Then I kind of still had some mixed feelings because like, where does this fit in? Is it going to feel like a sneaker and just have a very premium leather on it? Or does it actually kind of fit the bill of it being like a hybrid of a dress shoe upper with a sneaker construction with that side stitch and, you know, outsole? Just like the pair from Enzo, this is a pair that I've worn extensively since I've had it and it's only been less than a month. Well, that's gonna be something I'll touch on in a little bit, but number three is color six, Shell Cordovan. Color four, Shell Cordovan has really been a favorite of mine for what, uh, just as long as I've had this YouTube channel and probably a little bit further back than that. So let's just say like three years. Color six, Shell Cordovan is, it's not necessarily a rare color other than the fact that it isn't ordered that much. When I reached out to Acme to, to do this full strap penny loafer, they had a selection of color six shell cordovan. I decided like I wanted something different. This is kind of the perfect balance or it appears to be the perfect balance between like the bold color four and the overly <laughs> toned down or subtle color eight. Number four is the lack of purchases. As I was going through <laughs> all of my shoes, trying to figure out, all right, let's just pick like top five purchases. I, I don't really know <laughs> if I've had more than five or six purchases. Now I've picked up a few like used pairs. It would be somewhat disingenuous to pick a top five out of like eight other than my wallet enjoying that. It's definitely a sign of like my taste and sense of like what I truly want in a shoe. It's just kind of continuing to uh, mature and refine. And that's always a good thing. Like the, the ability to uh, get to the point where you know exactly what you want and you can kind of like weed out some of the things that like spark your interest aren't really that keen on adding it to the collection. And you just know that once you get it, it's not going to be something you find much use in. Now let's jump into uh, some of my favorite things that I've picked up in 2022. I want to start with this long handle shoehorn from Dapper Woodworks. Now this was a collaboration piece in the sense that like Justin had reached out to me, asked me if he could send an item my way and I could take a look at it and uh, just share some feedback, share some thoughts, uh, really just kind of check out his work. But I've tended to, uh, in the past, at least lean more towards the shorter handles just because it just was much more easy to handle, was much more easy to store somewhere, and it seemed like it was more practical. But I was wrong. <laughs> the long handle shoehorn is really a functional and practical staple for me in just putting the shoes on. Sometimes it's just a lot easier to use a long handle shoehorn and uh, something that's made of quality materials and is constructed very well to make this something that I really enjoy and uh, is one of my favorite. The next favorite is Rubber Soles. This took me a little bit to get to. I was always a leather sole guy. I think I really appreciated the 
elegance and the refinement and the ability for the shoemaker to kind of show off their craft in sculpting that leather sole. But it comes back to practicality and functionality. And for me, it's much more practical and functional to have something at least with a rubber heel and a half rubber topi. When I think about which shoes I wear most, it's the ones I don't have to think about. Going with a rubber sole option allows me to do that. Another 2022 favorite is shoes that don't have laces. I've always been a loafer fan. I've always liked Chelsea boots, although I haven't had many and I still, I still don't have many really in my collection, just two, which is probably enough, but we'll probably get more if we're gonna be real. We got Chelsea boots, we got lazy men, we have loafers, just other kind of slip on varieties. Being in a kind of a hybrid work environment, working from home, just the ease and removing anything that kind of causes friction <laughs> to wear the shoes is really something that I'm finding more and more valuable to me. Um, there are plenty of options. You have, lo you have penny loafers, you got Chelsea boots, you have the uh, kind of a hybrid of like a low cut Chelsea boot as well as the lazy man that looks like a Chelsea boot such as this one from Joe Works. And all of these things, while they don't replace the need to have a lace up shoe or a lace up boot, it's a uh, category or it's a sector. I find that I am grabbing those shoes more, grabbing those boots more and wearing them and getting more enjoyment out of them because I'm getting more wear out of them. Like I said, there are times, unfortunately, we do have to wear lace-up shoes and boots. And when you do that, you need to have quality laces. Unfortunately, that's just how a lace-up works is you need the laces. Mason and Smith offers custom laces, custom length, custom materials, colors, agelets. That is really like the epitome of I've got a very custom, very like made to measure or even like remote bespoke in some cases. I've got that shoe and I want to match that with an equally customizable and quality material shoelace. And Mason and Smith has really been the best option that, that I've found. And I've ordered probably upwards of like 30 or 40 laces from them now. You know, they are just extremely extremely pleasant folks to, to work with. Now, looking forward into uh, 2023. First is shoemakers that are able to continue to maintain business as usual. Industry trend over the last few years is sales, promotions, uh, made to order events, made to order events weekends, made to order events weekends, and then the next weekend's another made to order event weekend. The more and more brands, shoemakers, continue to kind of devalue their brand by offering sales and offering consistent sales, it doesn't necessarily change the quality of the shoe. That's not a direct correlation, but in my eyes, it's changing who their demographic is. I tend to steer away from those brands and those shoemakers when they go down that path because there has to be some trade-offs in order for them to afford to always offer their pairs at sale prices. Watch item number two for, for 2023 is going to be Instagram. It's going to be where a lot of these independent shoemakers that pop up on a daily basis, where they do their business. Instagram, honestly, like, I mean, I do enjoy the creative aspect, but it's not what it used to be. And a lot of those makers were relying on Instagram as their sole interaction point for purchases, for client consumer marketing and acquiring new and retaining existing customers. So uh, where does that go? Is there a new uh, forum for that? Is there a new forum for folks like us that are just like creating the content or just interacting and wanting to learn more and grow? And so long story short, Instagram is a pain in the ass and hopefully you find a better solution. Number three on the watch list here is gonna be heritage versus artisanal. I've ranted on videos here before about heritage, heritage shoemakers, heritage brands versus the artisanal one. Heritage brands are the ones uh, some would put in that category of falling into the trap of consistent sales 24, 7, 365 days a year. The artisanal ones, they, they can't really afford to do that. They offer a much more personalized user client experience 
and they really deliver the things that are important to me, that, that hands-on craftsmanship as well as that hands-on interaction and customer service. I think Artisanal is going to continue to go up in its stock while Heritage is going to uh, fall by the wayside. It may just be like my own like wish list there, but this is going to round out the watch list for 2023. Hopefully this isn't disappointing because I didn't give you a bunch of great makers to look at, but like less is more, fewer, but better quality. And by that, hopefully you can narrow down your own list of who those shoemakers brands styles should be. And this will kind of sum up a lot of the themes that I talked about. So what is most important to me is that I actually wear the shoe. If I get it and it just sits over here on the shelf, that's not giving me really any value. There are some pairs that sit there and that's fine. They're more like seasonal. Overall, that what gives me the most value of the shoe is when it's something that I want to wear. It's something that I reach to wear all the time and it's something that I do actually wear and enjoy when I'm wearing it. I would much rather have fewer but more of those types of shoes than have a huge expansive collection that is just constantly growing. And I either never get to wear the ones that I actually want because I'm trying to wear them all equally, or I kind of like forcibly <laughs> wear some shoes and I just don't, don't enjoy those at all. I'm gonna expand less is more real quick, which is when you're doing a group made to order, when you're doing a single made to order, don't go crazy. Think about what you want to use it for, where occasions you want to wear it in, or if it's all occasions. And then uh, craft something that based off of what you've worn in the past, and that way uh, it will actually come out the way that you want. Hopefully this was helpful, or if you guys found out or heard of a few folks or just a few items that you weren't thinking of before, if there's anything I missed, or if there's anything you think I overlooked in the collection or any of the videos that I shared this year, Definitely let me know and hope everyone's having a great holiday season and wishing you all the best. Thanks.